Yeah. Good evening, children. Good evening, uh, Gayatri. I've shared my screen. Is it visible? Yes, ma'am. Visible, okay. ma'am. All right. Good. So you missed the last session. Did you uh, find time to watch the recording? No, ma'am. I didn't watch it yet. All right. Let's uh, discuss the answer to this question. <clears throat> okay. uh, so here you have x is equal to square root of p plus 2q plus square root of p minus 2q over square root of p plus 2q minus square root of p minus 2q. So x is given to be this expression. Then we need to prove that or we need to show that qx square minus px plus q is equal to 0. The value of this expression is equal to 0. Okay. So let's take up this x is equal to this expression given. Now, whenever the denominator is irrational, default we have to rationalize the denominator. That's how we get started with the answer. Whenever the denominator is irrational, okay, the heading may not be the heading may not be rationalized the denominator. That need not be the heading. Okay, so it's like your uh, table, your study table is not organized, your bookshelf for your wardrobe is not organized. You don't need anybody to tell you to organize it, right? So you have to do it. Yeah. Uh, so in the same way, uh, you, you don't have to, uh, you know, have that instruction, the question that you have to rationalize the denominator. That goes without saying. The denominator is irrational, so let's rationalize it. So the conjugate of the denominator would be the same expression here, but with the opposite sign here. Here, the, these two terms are connected by a minus sign. So write the same two terms connected by a plus sign. And that would be the conjugate of this denominator, right? So the denominator is like root A minus root B. So the conjugate is root A plus root B, right? So see here, this one you can see here as it is. P plus 2Q is P, P plus 2Q, not P minus 2Q. Don't change the signs anywhere else. Only the sign connecting the two terms should be changed. The sign connecting the two terms should be changed. Okay, not any other sign. So see this one as it is, this one as it is, the connecting sign is minus, so the conjugate will take a plus sign. The same thing you see in the denominator. Okay, so that's the first step. Now we'll have to multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators, right? Okay, so that's what you see here. I've written, I've enclosed these terms in a bracket. You can see here and enclose these terms in a bracket, indicating that we'll have to multiply them, right? Multiply this numerator by this numerator. Denominator, the same thing, multiply the denominator. So this denominator multiplied by this denominator. So that's what you see here in the second step. All right. Okay. So in the next step, let's see how uh, you know we can multiply. So here it's like uh, root of p plus 2q. Here also we have root of p plus 2q. So you can just take this root a. Root of P minus 2Q, root of P minus 2Q. So you can take this root B because you have the same thing, no? And here it is plus, here also it is plus. All right? Or for me to explain it even more easily, let me take this one as A, this whole thing as A. And that's what you see here also, A. Here you see something, we'll call it B. We see the same thing here. So it's B. So in the numerators, we have A plus B into A plus B. In the numerator, we have A plus B into A plus B, which is A plus B, the whole square. Here, these two terms are the same. These two terms are the same. And the connecting sign, plus. Okay, so this bracket, which is A plus B, into this bracket, which is also A plus B. So the next step will be A plus B, the whole square. 
a plus b the whole square. That's about the numerator. So this is a, this is a plus, this is b the whole square. That's about the numerator. Now the denominator. So this one is a, this one is also a. See, like if you call this one a, this also is a because it's the same thing. And if you call this one as b, this one is also b, it's the same thing. So in the denominator, we have a minus b into a plus b. So a minus b into a plus b is a squared minus b squared. Right, a squared minus b squared, all right? So this is a, this is a, a squared minus, why minus? Because identity says minus. Okay, minus is not from here or anywhere. Minus is from the identity. The answer, the product a plus b into a minus b is a squared minus b squared, where a is this term squared <coughs> and b is b is this term, meaning this term, this is b, b squared. A square minus B square. Okay, so now it looks far simpler, meaning the new it's just shrunk now. It looks easier now. Now, uh, so the numerator is A plus B the whole square, right? So how do you expand that? A square plus B square plus 2AB or A square plus 2AB plus B square. Okay. So here I've written a squared plus b squared plus 2 into a into b. Where this is a and this is b. All right, so a squared plus this is b, this is b squared plus 2 into a into b. So we've expanded the new, uh, numerator. Our denominator is a squared minus b squared. So what happens? What is root a? The whole square. A, right? A. Like the square and the square root, they get cancelled. We are not supposed to do that, but you can just understand like that. So we know the we know the reason why root of uh, A the whole square is A. So similarly, root of P plus 2Q the whole square is P plus 2Q. And root of P minus 2Q the whole square is P minus 2Q. This minus sign. This result, this result here in the first bracket, this result here in the second bracket, and this connecting sign minus, minus. All right? Yeah. Now, next step. Uh, so this was this was a square, right? A square. So how, what does this simplify to? What's the value of this one? Square and square root gets cancelled. So we have p plus 2q, right? p plus 2q p plus 2q, right? And then this plus sign, plus sign, and here p minus 2q. Again, for the same reason, p minus 2q, right? Shiva, or not Shiva, Surya, Surya, yeah. All right? And then plus, now this one is 2 into root a into root b, which is 2 into root of a, b. Root a into root b is root of a, b root a into root b is root of a b like root of 2 into root of a into b both of them are under the square root so you can put them under the same square root and multiply them well you cannot write square root of a plus the square root of b as square root of a plus b this is incorrect Square root of A plus square root of B is not equal to square root of A plus B. This rule does not hold good for addition and subtraction. It holds good for multiplication and division. Yeah. Okay, multiplication and division, not addition and subtraction. So square root of A into square root of B can be written as square root of A into B. But square root of A minus square root of B cannot be written as square root of A minus B because they'll have, when you simplify this and this, you know, you'll get different values. It's not, see, and also it, it's okay. That's not the reason. The reason is because uh, C 
see the reason is because no i'm like thinking what example to give <laughs> but well, let me okay the reason is because what is the order of the operations here here it is find the square root of a find the square root of b and then find the difference find the square root of a square root of b and then the difference of the square roots but here it is find the difference and then find the square root of that difference. So the order in which the operations uh, have to be executed is different. On the left hand side, we'll have to find the square roots and then find the difference of the square roots. On the right hand side, you have to find the difference of A and B and then find the square root of the difference. So finding the difference and then, I'm sorry, finding the square roots and then the difference is different from finding the difference and then the square root of the difference. The order is different. And the answer will be different. So square root of A minus square root of B is not equal to square root of A minus B. Again, if it's plus also, it's not true. But for multiplication and division, it's true. So square root of A into square root of B is equal to square root of A into B. OK, so that 2AB, 2AB, here we have no 2 into A into B, 2 into A into B. OK, so it is 2 into root A into root B is root of AB. So see root of this one into this one. Now we are going to, uh, once I finish explaining, uh, you know, I'll give you 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes time. All of you will work it correctly by yourself without taking help from this slide. <laughs> yeah. All right. So yeah, so that's that's about this. So square root of a into square root of b, square root of a into b. Okay, and in the denominator, uh, open the brackets. So p plus two q, p plus two q, minus p plus two q, minus p plus two. Open the bracket. Open the second bracket. Open the brackets. Open this bracket and open this one also. When you open this bracket, it will be minus p plus two q. Right. Hmm. Again, in the numerator here, open the brackets, the first and the second bracket. So P plus 2Q plus P minus 2Q. And then here, plus 2. Now, what is this? A plus B into A minus B. A plus B into A minus B. Okay? A plus B into A minus B is? No, I think uh, you're confused. Mom, you're muted. Or your or. It. There we. Yeah, then this two, and here this is a plus b into a minus b, which is a squared minus b squared. So please don't write b squared like this. B, this is b, b squared. So next step it will be 4q squared. B squared. So don't write b. This is careless. If you write like this, this is not, uh, you know, this cannot be okay. It's okay. It's not OK. This is not OK. This is OK for 8th standard. Not OK for 9th standard. B square. This is B square. If this is B, then OK, this square, B square. But if this is B, this is not B square. This is B square. OK. 
okay for eighth standard meaning okay to make that mistake and correct yourself for eighth standard not that's not correct for eighth standard it's not okay for, it's not okay it's not okay but it's okay to make that mistake in eighth standard and correct it yeah i said i meant it's not okay to make that mistake and now in ninth standard so here and then uh, a square minus b square all right and here you see plus 2q minus 2q gets cancelled plus 2q minus 2q gets cancelled and uh, p plus p is 2p plus this 2 square root of p square minus 4q square by 4q all right okay now we have to uh, okay i've taken out two common you can cross multiply also see you can also cross multiply but see uh, there are two terms in the numerator right 2p plus 2 into square root of p square minus uh, 4 q square so i've taken out two common Okay, so I've taken out two common. So when you take out two common in the bracket, uh, you have p plus square root of p square minus four. Same thing what I told him. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so two common, two common. So when you take out this two common, you must write this in the bracket. Take out the two. Take out the two. Two is common, right? So write this in the bracket. Now, supposing it was a four here. Supposing, supposing it was a four here. So you have taken two out. No, so this will not come. This four will become two. Then you should write this in the bracket. Right? So two common. So don't write the two. Write this in the bracket by four q. So now what happens? Two ones are two twos are. See here, this gets cancelled. Here, two ones are, two twos are, right? Yeah, now cross multiply. <clears throat> so you can see this x is equal to p plus square root of p square minus 4q square by 2q. Cross multiply, so you get 2qx is equal to p plus square root of p square minus 4q square, right? Now what you do is, uh, how many terms are there altogether? There are three terms. This, uh, now. There is one term on the left hand side and two terms on the right hand side. OK, of the three terms, this one term has a square root, meaning it's square root of p square minus 4q square. And you always want to get rid of the square root. You always want to get rid of the square root symbol. There are three terms in all. There are three terms in all. This is good. This is good. This one is also good except for the square root uh, symbol. So you don't want it. So what you do, you isolate that. Isolate that meaning you have that alone on one side, any one side. You have that alone on one side. So that's what you see in the next step. Who was along with the square root term? This P, no? So you bring that P to the other side. You bring this P to the other side. So 2QX minus P is equal to, now this one is standing alone. This one is alone. Earlier it was with P. P and, P and this term, they were together. Now, because we want to get rid of the square root symbol, uh, we need to isolate this term, have this term alone on any one side, LHS or RHS. This is in the right hand side, so let it be there. Who's along with that? P. So take the P alone to the other side, so it becomes minus P. So now the same three terms we have, but two of them which don't have that square root are on the left hand side. And this term which has a square root symbol is alone on the right hand side. Now square on both the sides because when you because you know when you square uh, the square and the square root gets eliminated. Go so square on both the sides. So supposing this was cube root of, for example, if it was cube root, then you should cube on both the sides. Okay, you must cube on both the sides. So here this is uh, square root of p square minus four uh, q square. So it's square root basically. So Square on both the sides. So when you square on both the sides, it looks like 2qx minus p the whole square is equal to square root of p square minus 4q square the whole square. That's what is here. Square on both the sides. Now when you square on both the sides, uh, this is of the form a. Uh, sorry, this is of the form a minus b the whole square. A minus b the whole square. And what's a minus b the whole square? Sorry, what's a minus b the whole square? Yeah. 
The second one is right. What was, what's the first one? A plus B. A plus B minus B. A plus B minus 2AB or A square plus B square minus 2AB? No, no, you see, you see, A square minus 2AB plus B square is correct. Okay, the first one you, you're saying A plus B minus 2AB. A square plus B square minus 2AB, no? Okay, so that's what you see here. A square plus B square minus 2AB. All right, is equal to here the square and the square root eliminated. So we have this. We just have the terms free from the square root. P square minus 4Q square. Now, <clears throat> this one is 2 squared is 4Q squared X squared. See, 2QX. 2QX into 2QX. 2QX into 2QX is 2 to the 4. Q into Q is Q square. X into X is X square. P square. 2 to the 4. PQX. 4 PQX. Okay, then I've uh, brought all the, because how is the result? Is equal to 0. There is nobody on the right hand side. Okay, so look at the result which we have to prove. So then we have nothing on the right hand side. So you bring all the terms to the left hand side. Bring all of them. You have these two here, no, on the right hand side. So bring them to the left hand side. So they come to the left hand side as minus p square plus 4q square is equal to c. Okay, now see if we have like terms. Do we have like terms? Yeah, this plus p square minus p square gets cancelled. Right? Now, so you're left with these three terms. Now, these three terms have what in common? They have 4Q in common. You can check that. They have 4Q in common. So, 4, 4 is common. So, don't write this. And Q is common. So, this, so see, a 4Q. So, 4Q is out. So, 1Q. Then this Q is out. And this one also, 1Q. This is what you should write in the bracket. Correct? Yes. Are you following what I'm showing? When you take out 4Q, uh, so from the three terms, take away that 4Q. Whatever remains, you must write in the bracket. Yeah, so Qx squared minus uh, Px plus Q is equal to 0. All right? So now what happens in the next step? This one comes for division. This 4Q will come for division, 0 by 4Q. So that becomes 0. This 4Q comes for division. 0 by 4Q is 0. So we have Qx squared minus px plus q is equal to 0, which is the result we have to prove. So you just have to start with rationalizing the denominator. And the identities used here are a plus b the whole square is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab. a minus b the whole square is equal to a square plus b square minus 2ab. And a plus b into a minus b is equal to a squared minus b squared. These three identities. And then you should also uh, remember that uh, when you have a few terms on the left hand side and right hand side, if any term has a square root symbol, okay, you need to get rid of that square root symbol. So what do you do? The terms that do not have a square root symbol have all of them on one side. And that term which has the square root symbol have that alone on the other side. Whichever side should be alone. Do that and then square on both the sides. When you do that, the square and the square root is eliminated. And that's how you free these terms from the square root symbol. Yeah, that's all it is. All right, so please try. Any point you're struck, you're not able to understand, please ask me. I'm not going to repeat the explanation, but anywhere you have uh, clarifications, please ask me. Okay, yeah, start working. Yeah, I'm not going to present the answer. You have it in your book also. You can don't flip back and see the answer. Please try to do it by yourself. Yeah, this is the question.
Okay, so since you're new, I'll present it. Practice with help.
Finished? Any questions? Good. Online children, please ask me if uh, something is not clear. Please ask me. Well, it's clear, ma'am. Right, I agree. Good. Clear, ma'am. Okay, Shreyan. Can all of you hear? Okay, so we have so we have two more uh, parts of this chapter: uh, exponents and uh, representing uh, irrational numbers on a number line. Representing rational numbers on a number line, we have seen in uh, standard seven and eight. In class seven and class eight, we have seen how to represent rational numbers on a number line. So this year we'll see how to represent irrational numbers, the procedure to represent, to show the pro position of an irrational number on the number line. All right. So we have these two parts, exponents, exponents and uh, representing exponents is, uh, you know, one 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 part of this chapter, and and the other part, which remains, I'm talking about, is uh, representing irrational numbers on the number line. So before we, you know, like the next thing I will be doing is exponents. Before we go to that, we'll just recall what we've learned so far. I have a paper for you. We'll just work that. Maybe next class I'll start with exponents. All right. Then all of you. Yes, ma'am. Take yes, the table closer to you. You know. No, okay for you, not for me. <laughs> all right. Oh, you you still completing? Okay. Yeah, but you have to tell me if we have already done this one in the class. I'll just show you the questions. See, the first one is uh, classify as rational or irrational. No, oh, ma'am, we haven't done this in class. Okay. See the questions? No? Okay, fine. Yeah, get started. This revision. <clears throat> hmm. 
next slide i have the answers uh, for questions from a to f so you'll have to complete from a to f and only then we can see the answers because uh, you know on one slide i have the answers to all these questions so please complete a to f and we'll see the answers classify as rational or irrational I would like to modify the heading because I don't want you to just classify as rational or rational. I want you to simplify and then classify. Simplify and classify as rationals or irrationals. Just add that to your heading. Simplify and then classify. Because you might rightly say that it is rational or irrational, but you should have simplified for me. Yeah, you might classify them correctly without simplifying. No, but I want you to simplify and then classify as rational or irrational.
finished a to f no ma'am okay Yeah. So, uh, uh, subdivision A, when you simplify, what's the value? Two, correct. Subdivision two. A, when you simplify, the value is two. And is two rational or irrational? Rational. 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 Because two is two by one, right? Integer by integer. It's a rational number. Two is two by one. 2 is an integer, 1 is an integer, integer by integer is a rational number. Okay, so the first one is rational. The second one, upon simplifying, what do you get? 4, Four root 5. 4 root 5. 4 root 5 and it's irrational. The third one, on simplifying, what's the value you get? 0 0.16 that is 4 by 25 so it's rational oh 4 by 25 0 0.16 yeah go ahead which is rational so z it's a, it's square root of 0 0.16 right it's not 0 0.16 it's square root of 0 0.16 okay okay yes ma'am yeah, what is a simplified uh, value? Zero point? No, but it's square root of 0 0.16, no? Simplify that further. What well, is it 2 by 5? Yeah, 2 by 5. And 2 by 5 is? It's 2 by 5 or uh, square root of 0 0.16 is 0 0.4. Either ways. Square root of 0 0.16 is 0 0.4. 0 0.4 into 0 0.4 is 0 0.16. So 0 0.4 terminating decimal. So rational. Or if you have 2 by 5, 2 by 5 is integer by integer. So rational. Next one. On simplifying, what's the value? 0 0.16. By root 3, correct. 1 by root 3, irrational. 1 by root 3, irrational. Next one. 3, very good. 3, rational. 3, rational. Next one. 21. 21. 21, rational. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see the answers? So this is a minus b into a plus b. So a squared minus b squared, 9 minus 7, 2, rational. So this is nothing but uh, 8 into root 15 is root 5 into root 3. Why? Right? 2 root 3 or 2 into root 3. So 2 ones are, 2 fours are. Root 3 and root 3 cancels. So it's 4 root 5. It's 4 root 5. See, you don't have to rationalize the denominator here. If the denominator is irrational, you don't have to rationalize the denominator. You're just breaking down the, uh, you know, terms or the numbers in the numerator and denominator, trying to simplify, trying to simplify by cancelling out common. So this is four root five irrational and this one is 4 by 25 
you can either divide 4 by 25 on divi dividing you get 0 0.16 square root of 0 0.16 which is 0 0.4 or square root of 4 is 2 and square root of 25 is 5 so 2 by 5 rational either ways this one is uh, 1 by 3 irrational so here we have square root of Square root of 18 by square root of 2 is square root of 18 by 2. So 2 ones are 2 nines are. Square root of 9, 3, rational. Again, a plus b into a minus b, a squared minus b squared, 21, rational. I'll present this uh, slide again. Those who want to take down the rest of the questions, Please take down all the questions. And then I'll present the answer slide again. This answer slide again. Make a note of the questions from G to H. I'll just wait for a minute. Make a note of all the questions from G to H. Sorry, G to L. Taken? Just a second, ma'am. Okay. Yes, just a second. Okay. <laughs> okay. Question number L is it um, 0 0.5? 0 0.5, yeah, 0 0.5. Okay. Zero point five. Yeah, those who need to complete these answers or, or do some corrections, please complete them and then over the rest of the questions.
Yeah, you can try the others. Complete it then. Checked and corrected your answers from A to F. Okay, then proceed to work the others. Questions you want again? You can understand which one? I. Yeah. Yeah, if simplification is not possible, then you can directly comment. No, yeah, in this question, it's not possible. It's it's a direct value, right? Where simplification is not possible, so you can directly comment, but you should give a reason. Okay, then I should further modify the question. The question is simplify if possible, and then classify as rational or irrational. Completed, ma'am. Nice, okay. So, if the question is like this, do you multiply two and three? Then what do you do? You cannot multiply. To answer your question, you cannot, you should not multiply them. Yeah. All right. So, <clears throat> G, what's the value? Eight. Eight. So, rational. H. So, that's nothing but square root of 361 by. 100. So square root of 361 is 19. By 100 is 10. So it's 1.9. Or you can directly write square root of 3.61 is 1.9. You can directly write that. Because 19, 19 times is 361. So 1.9 into 1.9 is 3.61. You can either write 1.9 directly 
or you can convert that to a fraction <clears throat> and then 19 by 10 and then 1.9. So what is this? Rational. Why? <coughs> terminating decimal. It's a terminating decimal, so it's a rational number. 1.9 is a terminating decimal and hence it's a rational number. What size uh, is um, Ma'am, yeah. in G come 8 came, ma'am. How did 8 come? In G. <laughs> right? Oh, okay. I accidentally took plus 3 as minus 3. Sorry, ma'am. Okay, in I, I is a, is it a terminating decimal? Is it a non-terminating no. decimal? Non-terminating decimal. Non-terminating so decimal. Huh? Non non-terminating, non-recurring. Yeah, it's non-terminating, non-recurring. Very good. So if it's non-terminating, non-recurring, it is an yeah. irrational number. Irrational number. Irrational number. What's the value of J? 1.5 minus 1.5 which is rational. minus 1.5 minus 1.5 minus 1.5 it's a rational number because it's terminating what about k what's the cube root of 125 five. Five. 5 the cube root of 125 is 5 so 5 into 2 10 rational 625 to the power 0 0.5. What is 0 0.5? 5 yeah. by 10. And what's 5 by 10? 1 by 2. 1 by 2. 0 0.5 is 5 by 10. 5 by 10 simplifies to 1 by 2. So it's, yeah. Who said that? Yeah. Okay, or you can write it as 20. 25 squared. The whole power 1 by 2. So 2 and 2 gets cancelled, right? So it's 25. Rational number. 0 0.5 is 1 by 2. 625 to the power 1 by 2. 625 is 25 squared. So 2, 2 gets cancelled. The value is 25. And 25 is rational. Ma'am, I'm having a doubt, ma'am. Yeah. In J question, ma'am, it's given as minus root of 2.25, ma'am. Then how will we do that, ma'am? So minus root. One minute, dear. One second. Just... Mom, I'm asking about J. Yeah, darling. Yeah, yeah. I'm just coming there. Okay, mom. Coming there. What is the square root of 2.25? 1.5. So minus 1.5. Correct? Gayatri? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Now minus 1.5. 1.5 is terminating, right? Yes, ma'am. It's terminating. Rational number. Whether it is positive or negative, it's terminating. So it's rational. No, mom. Like if we multiply minus one point five two times, means we'll get plus two point two five or two five eight, mom. No, no. This is not the question. Is not this. This is not the question. The question is minus square root of two point two five. 
So when you multiply 1.5 and 1.5, you definitely get 2.25. Mm, yes, ma'am. Yeah, it's minus so of the, it's the negative of this value. It's a negative of this oh. value. The value of this one is 1.5. The minus is outside. Okay, okay ma'am. When you multiply 1.5, 1.5 into 1.5, it is 2.25 and minus. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. See, square root of, what is square root of 2.25, Gayatri? 1.5, right? 1.5. Okay. Because 1.5 to 1.5 is 2.25, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so the, then the value of this one, then the value of this one will be, the value of this is 1.5. And fix is minus sign. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. Hmm? Rational. So two into cube root of one twenty five. Two into cube root of one twenty five is five. Ten. So rational. Six point sorry, six twenty five. The whole power zero point five. So it is six twenty five to the power five by ten. One and two. So it's twenty point five into one by two. Six twenty five into one by two. Twenty five. Rational. Twenty five by ten. Twenty five by ten. Okay, completed all of you? Yes. Online children? Yes, ma'am, completed. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then classify you. Maybe I'll share this as homework, no? Again, uh, same heading. I'll share these questions as homework. We'll discuss them in the next class, okay? Yeah, answer this okay. one. Every rational number is a? Yeah. Every, Every rational number is a? Real number. Real number. Every rational number is a real number. Every irrational number is also a real number. Very good. You can just make no, a note Every of rational number is all of these, right, ma'am? No. Now, for example, uh, 4 by 5 is a rational number, but it's not a natural number. Oh, okay, ma'am. Yeah. <clears throat> The other way is true. Every natural number is a rational number. Every whole number is a rational number. Every integer is a rational number. That is true. But every rational number need not be a natural number. Every natural number, every whole number, every integer is a rational number. But the other way, 
every ra rational number need not be natural because okay minus 3 by 4 minus 3 by 4 is rational but it's not natural it's not a natural number it's not a whole number it's not an integer so you can just make a note of that statement oh, okay. every you can just make a note of this question oh, yeah. and circle the correct answer the real number well, don't write the only the correct option <laughs> we have to choose from these four all of you no we have a doubt yeah isn't every rational number also an integer okay so consider the rational number mm, minus uh whatever minus five by seven Okay. Is it an integer? Is minus 5 by 7 an integer? Minus mm, 5 by remember. 7. It's not an integer. It's not an integer. Okay. You just have to take an example to understand. That's all. See, if you feel every rational number is a natural number, is a natural number. What are natural numbers? Like this. But uh, take this number minus four. Minus four is a rational number, but is it a natural number? No. Minus four is a rational number, but it's not a natural number. Similarly, minus four is a rational number, but it's not a whole number. Because whole numbers are these. Now minus four is a rational number and it's also an integer. So take a different example, make it minus 4 by 5. Now minus 4 by 5 is a rational number, but it's not an integer. So every rational number is a real number, is the correct answer. Yeah. Now first take down the question, children. Please write the question. Yeah, what's a, which one is the correct option? A, B, C, O, D, C. You're not cheering anybody here. <laughs> uh, C, is it? Okay. Why? Why not pi? Because pi is an irrational number. It's a decimal expansion is non-terminating, non-repeating. What about root 7? Irrational because it's decimal expansion is non-terminating, non-repeating. And what about this one? It is a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. Correct. This one is a non-terminating, repeating decimal. It's non-terminating, repeating. This one is non-terminating. It's non-terminating because it goes on forever. Goes on like this. Goes on, goes on, goes on. Because it goes on forever, it's non-terminating. And it's repeating because these two digits, 7, 5, keep happening. So C, option C, 
represents a rational number because it's non terminating but repeating. Yeah. So this. Please write the question. Done? Yeah. So is the statement true or false? True, true false. True, true false. <laughs> no, one true or false? True. False, huh? True. So square root of 18 by square root of 8, eight is not a rational number. Yeah, because root a, square root of 18 and square root of 8 are not integers. So the statement is true. <laughs> how many of you say true? So because of, how many of you say true? 1, 2, 3, 4. Online children, is the statement true or false? True. 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 Okay, so it's not like that. We never, we never uh, decide if an expression is rational, rational or irrational without simplifying. Okay, in this expression, in this expression, the numerator. It's not an integer. The denominator is also not an integer, but that doesn't, you know, with this, you cannot uh, comment or conclude that it is rational or irrational. You need to simplify. Now, the given expression, yes, the numerator is not an integer. The denominator is not an integer. That's fine. But with this, you cannot say because the numerator is not an integer, the denominator is not an integer. It is not a rational number. You cannot say that. You need to simplify. Or you, you definitely can say that the numerator is not an integer. The denominator is not an integer. That's all. Stop there. But you cannot conclude. Rational, irrational, we cannot conclude without simplifying. So how to simplify? So there's nothing but square root of 18 by 8, right? So two nines are, two fours are. So it is square root of 9 by 4, which is 3 by 2. Now we have simplified the expression given. The value of this expression is 3 by 2. Supposing uh, you write a test for two marks. OK, and your teacher uh, gives you uh, this is your this. This is what you have got. That means you've got one and a half marks. 3 by 2. This is one and a half. The value of this one is one and a half. 3 by 2. 
Now look at three by two. The numerator is an integer. The denominator is an integer. Integer by integer is a rational number. This one is not an integer. This one is also not an integer. That's correct. But we should see if this can be further simplified, if this expression can be further simplified. Without simplifying, we cannot conclude if it is rational or irrational. You have to simplify and then conclude. On the face of the expression, yes, the numerator is not an integer, the denominator is not an integer. That's true, but stop there. Don't conclude if rational, irrational, don't do that. Simplify before you give your uh, opinion. So first simplify. How do you simplify? Square root of 18 by 8. Two nines are two fours are. So square root of 9 by 4, which is 3 by 2. Now, this cannot be simplified any further. Now look at the numerator. Integer, denominator, integer, integer by integer. It is a rational number. So the given expression, this one is a rational number. It doesn't look like, but when you simplify, its value is rational. Its value is rational. For example, 225 like this. When you look at the square root of 225, irrational. No, what is the value of square root of 225? It's 50. So it's rational, right? But when it is like this in this form, you're not supposed to, uh, because it is square root of 225, because we see the square root symbol, you cannot say it's irrational, right? Because the value of square root of 225 is 50. And 15 is 15 by 1, which is rational. So always simplify and then conclude. And that will be the correct conclusion. Yeah, please write down. So you can do it. I'll just explain what uh, is here. You can do it like uh, write any one of the two methods. So see here, what is um, 18, 9, 2 are right? And what's eight four twos are correct? So nine comes out as three, and four comes out of the square root as two, and this two two remains under the square root, and then they get cancelled. So three by two, correct? Correct. This one gets. So it's three by two, or you can write it as square root of eighteen by eight. So this is nine, so this is four, so three by two. All right. Take any one. Work any one of the two methods. You don't have to work both. Finished? Yes. Done writing online children. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let me see how good you are with division. Find the decimal expansion of 11 by 24. Perform the long division and find the decimal expansion of 11 by 24.
What's the answer? Yeah, tell me. Ma'am, is it zero point four five eight eighteen? Book is all the time, calculator. I tried it off, ma'am. Hmm? Calculator? No, I tried it out. Okay. Zero point four five eight three, then another three comes wrong, and I'm, and I'm seeing that uh, three keeps going on, so I'm just stopping that. Correct. Okay, so <clears throat> hmm. got it. Very good. Zero point four five eight. Sorry, correct. So you can stop the division there. Correct. When the remainder repeats itself, you can stop the division. When a remainder or a set of remainders repeat themselves, you can stop the division. Yeah, please see here. So I do the division like this. So 24, 24, ones are 24, not possible. So 24 zeros are. So 24 zeros are zero and 11 is a remainder. I'll tell you why I do this. I'll tell you why I do this. 24 ones are 24 right but you have only 11 here so you cannot do that so it is 24 zero times zero right and 11 is a remainder now correct so now after that we don't have we have taken the whole of 11 so there's nothing after it so you'll have to add a, uh, keep a point and add a zero correct now 24 fours are 96 14 is a remainder you can add a zero. 24 fives are 120. 20 is a remainder, add a zero. Eights are uh, 192. Eight is a remainder, add a zero. Threes are 72. Again, eight is a remainder. See, remainder is repeated, you can stop. So the different remainders are, see, when do you get a remainder on subtracting, right? So here when you subtract, the remainder is 11. And here when you subtract, the remainder is 14. Here, when you subtract, the remainder is 20. Here, when you subtract, the remainder is 8. Here, when you subtract, the remainder is 8. You can stop, actually. When the remainder repeats, this, you can just stop the division. I've just done one more. Remainder 8. So you can see that we have 11, 14, 20. Three different remainders. Correspondingly, in the quotient, we have 4, 5, 8. Three different digits in the quotient. And once the remainder starts repeating, 8, 8, see it becomes 3, 3. Now it becomes, so 3 and then 3 repeats. When the remainder starts repeating, the digit in the quotient also starts repeating itself. 11, 14, 20, different remainders. 4, 5, 8, different digits in the quotient. 8, 8. So you can see three, three, 
when the remainder repeats the digit in the quotient also will repeat now you will ask me no but you have one more eight but there's no three here i have not continued the division yeah so you understand that so if you want to see the different remainders this is how we should divide we should you should do this meaning 24 zeros are zero then only you can see 11 as the remainder if you want to see the different remainders and their corresponding digits in the quotient, you'll have to divide like this is what I'm saying. You must start with 24 zeros are zero. And 11 is the remainder. All right. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Try this. Finished? Forgotten the procedure? Okay. You got it? Yeah. No, no, no. Without actual division, find which of the following have a terminating decimal expansion. You just have to say if it has a terminating decimal expansion or not. So you need to first simplify. So three fives are three thirty-two times. So we have five by thirty-two. After simplifying, you need to uh, take the denominator and express it as a product of its prime factors. So thirty-two is two into two into two into two into two. So two to the power five. Now the denominators of the form two to the power m into five to the power n, where m and n are whole numbers. We have 2 to the power 5, but 5 to the power we don't have. So you can just say, show it as 5 to the power 0. So the denominators of the form 2 to the power m into 5 to the power n, where m and n are whole numbers. So uh, the given expression as a terminating decimal expansion. Otherwise, it has a non-terminating repeating decimal expansion. The steps are like this. This is the given expression. First, simplify. First, simplify. Cancel the numerator and the denominator using a common factor. So three, sorry. So three fives are three thirty-two times. So you get five by thirty-two. After simplifying, we have nothing to do with the numerator. Let the numerator be. Take up the denominator. Express the denominator as a product of its prime factors. So thirty-two can be written as two to the power five. Now check if the denominator is of this form, 2 to the power m into 5 to the power n. Is it of that form? Yes, because 2 to the power m, 2 to the power 5, 5 is a whole number. 
into phi to the power n we don't have, but you can write phi to the power zero, right? Because anything to the power zero is one, correct? So yes, the denominator is of the form two to the power m into phi to the power n, where m and n are whole numbers. Five is a whole number, zero is a whole number. So because the denominator is of that form, the given expression has a terminating decimal expansion. So what are the steps? First, simplify. Then denominator prime factorization. It should be of the form, the prime factorization of the denominator should be of the form 2 to the power m into phi to the power n, where m and n are whole numbers. If it's of that form, then yes, the given expression has a terminating decimal expansion. If not, it has a non-terminating repeating decimal expansion. Like for example, if, if the prime factorization of the denominator ha had a factor like three or seven, then it's not of this form. If there were factors other than two or five, then it's not of this form. So in that case, it will have a non-terminating repeating uh, decimal expansion. Yeah, take down. Finished. So what's the first step? No way, Vahid. Come, don't get up. Sit down. Simplify. Okay. Second step. So you need to express the denominator as a product of its prime factors. So two into two into two into two into two. Into two. Okay, then, which is two to the power five. Next. So then you need to come. You need to check if the denominator is of the form two to the power m into five to the power n, right? If it's of that form. Then rational, I'm sorry, then terminating decimal. If not, non terminating repeating decimal. Yeah, check this. Twenty seven by eighty.
Terminating the single expansion. Okay, so the denominator. Very good. 2 to the power 4 into 5 to the power 1. Very good. Correct. You cannot simplify. 27 and 80 cannot be further reduced. Okay, so yeah. Correct. All right. When we go out to play, the time flies. <laughs> but when we are in a class, <laughs> the hands are like not moving. Then, <laughs> so we are like looking at the time in our watch and the clock there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next one. Find the decimal expansion of 100 by 101 by performing the long division. Show the remainders at the different stages alongside. Basically, do the long division and show the remainders. And please start like this. Hundred and one zero times. Zero. And 100 is the remainder. Please start like this. Then keep a point, add a zero, and continue. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, what is the quotient you're getting? Zero point. Okay, zero point nine nine and then zero zero, then nine nine zero zero. Very good. Very good. Correct. Okay, one student here has already completed the division process. Online children. Okay, I'm going to present the answer. See here, we're supposed to. 
uh, divide and show the remainders alongside. So I told you, please listen. It may be simple, but I still want you to listen to me. 101, zero times. 101, zero times, zero. So 100 is the remainder. Then keep a point, add a zero. So 100 is the remainder. The remainder in the first stage is 100. Do we start from the beginning? OK, then 101, nine times is 909. And 91 is the remainder. <clears throat> you can add a zero. Every stage you can add one zero. So 101 again, nine times 909, one is the remainder. The remainder is one. And every stage you can add one zero. Right? You have to divide. See, force yourself to divide. So 101, zero times. See, you cannot put one because 101 into one is 101. But the number we have here is only 10. 101 into 1 is 101. Oh, but you have only 10 with you. So 101 into 0 is 0. If you can't even put 1, we feel 1 is the smallest number you can write in the quotient. No, 0 is the smallest number you can write in the quotient. If 1 is big, then 0. 0 will fit. So 101 into 0 is 0. So now the remainder is 10. Remainder is 10. Now every stage you can put 1, 0. So put that 0. You have to divide. You should subtract, get the remainder, add the zero, and you should divide. No, but 101, no, this is 100. So 101 into zero is zero, right? And now 100 is the remainder. 100 is the remainder now. So see, the remainder is repeated. 100, we already got remainder. Again, it's repeating. You can continue if you want. You can add one uh, zero here, and when you continue, you will get 101 into 9 is 909, correct? And again, 91 will be the remainder. Add a zero, same thing. So please read the question. It is find the decimal expansion of 100 by 101 by performing the long division. Show the remainders at different stages alongside. So these are the different remainders. 191, 1 and uh, 10. Again, 100, 91, 1 and 10. Goes on like that. So now for 100, it is 9. For this 91, it is 9. For this 1, it is 0. For this 10, it is 0. Again, 100. See, for this 100, it is 9. For this 91, also it is 9. For this 1, it is 0. For this, in the portion I'm saying, and for this 10 also it's 0. Now again 100 has come, no? so again 9. 9, 0, 0. 9, 9, 0, 0. See, one thing you should remember is, remainders you can get plenty, but digits we have only 10, no? We have only 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Only these digits can repeat. Remainders you can get now, see, when you're dividing by 101, you can get... Uh, one as a remainder, two as a remainder, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. You can you can get so many remainders. You cannot have different digits for different remainders because remainders you can get many, but digits we have only ten, no? Yes or no? Yeah. So please understand that for this remainder hundred, the digit is nine. For this remainder ninety one, the digit is nine. For this remainder one, the digit is zero. For this remainder 10, the digit is 0. Now this set is going to repeat again. Repeat. Not repeat again. Repeat. So 9900 0, 0 again. So you will see the remainders 191, 110. Can you see that pattern? So it's to be written like this, children. See here? 0 0.9900 recurring. Now this it again repeats 9900 zero, zero. again 9900 zero, zero. again 9900 zero, zero. 9900 zero, zero. it's going to go on like this so it is 0 0.9900 zero, zero recurring all right this set of digits are going to repeat 
So if you feel these zeros have no value, so I'm going to just write this. You're wrong. This means it is 0 0.99999. Remember that these zeros are embedded. See 0 0.9900, These zeros are embedded. It's between them. So you get me? Finish this, all of you. Mm, this one, so yeah, this one. A. <clears throat> okay. Please write the question and write all the options. Yeah. Option A, B, C, D, which is correct. Online children. So here, A is it? A. A and C, ma'am. A and C. Oh, I don't know if it's just correct, but I guess it's uh, one of them. Y3, is it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So she says A and C, A or C, one of the two, she says, okay. A, right here, A, already. What about the others? Harsha, Lakshana, Shreya. A. 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 Okay. <clears throat> Fine. See, the question is find a rational number. So for, we need to eliminate from the options, eliminate the irrationals. The question is a rational number between. OK, so from the options A, B, C, D, we'll eliminate the irrationals. Correct, see, like for some, for say for some particular competition, the teacher is selecting only girls. So the boys are like made to sit aside and the teacher goes ahead with the girls, right? Look. So like that, now options A, B, C, D has both rationals and irrationals. But the question is a rational number between these two. So keep aside the irrationals. Now this one is irrational. Root 3 plus root 5 by 2 is irrational. See, the value may be between root 3 and root 5. Maybe, may not be. That we are not interested because it is irrational. See, whether it is between root 3 and root 5 or not between root 3 and root 5, it's irrelevant because it is irrational. We are looking for a rational number between these two, not an irrational number. But this one is irrational. Option A is irrational. Why is it irrational? Because root 3, what's root 3? Non-terminating, non-repeating. 
what's root 5 non terminating non repeating when you put them together when you find the sum a different non terminating non repeating decimal pi 2 a different non terminating non repeating decimal so it's irrational similarly option b is irrational because root 3 into root 5 by 2 this is non terminating repeat sorry non terminating non repeating non terminating non repeating their product and by 2 this is irrational option b is irrational only options c and d are rational values so it has to be one of these two see now all these four all these four may be between root 3 and root 5 that's a different thing we have to find the rational number between these two so this one is irrational this one is irrational only these two are rational now between c and d which is the correct option for that root 3 mm -hmm. you need to remember yeah so for that correct gayatri was right so for that you need to go to, uh, you need to find the or uh, you need to know the value of root 3 what is the value of root 3 1.732 root 5 2.234 you need to remember this root 3 is 1.732 or you should remember at least 1.7 and uh, root 5 is 2.234 so now, which is that value between these two? Two, right? Two. Two. Two point five is after two point two three four. It's beyond this. Two point five will be here. Here. One point. One point seven three two. Then two. Then two point two three four. Then two point five. This is root three and this is root five. So between root 3 and root 5, we have 2. But where is 2.5? It's beyond root 5. Because this is 2.2. This is 2.5. It's beyond root 5. So the correct option is C. Am I clear, children? 2.5 is beyond the value mm -hmm. of root 5. The value of root 5 is 2.2. 2.5 is after that. It's beyond uh, this one. So it's not between. Yeah, so how do you answer this question? First, eliminate, like you shortlist, you know. So you eliminate the uh, irrationals. This is irrational, this is irrational. Now, between these two, the value of this one is 1.7, this one is 2.2. So, 2 is the number between 1.7 and 2.2, and not 2.5. 2.5 is rational, but not between these two. So the correct option is C. Mm. We need to do like this or we can like uh, root 3 and root 5 between it. Uh, we have root 4. So root 4 is equal to those. Can we say like that? Can we find but, like what if, if, but what if this value was given? What will you do if this was given? Oh, yeah. In this case, you're right. For the options given here, you're right. So she says root 3, root 5, no root 4. So root 4 is between root 3 and root 5. And root 4 is 2. So 2 is the correct option. You're right, Gayatri. Okay. What I explained was for any uh, option given. So this is specific for 2, your explanation. I said 1.7 and 2.2 so that any other value given also you will be able to locate. I'm sorry, you will be able to find. Done? Yeah, we'll just answer this and wind up the session for today. Our rational number between root 3 and root 11. Rational number. So, which of the options here will be eliminated? A and A and B, ma'am. A and B gone because they are irrational. A and B gone. Now between these two, what is one? What is a root three? One point seven. And what is root eleven? Yeah, root eleven. We may not know, but it's three point something, right? Because three threes are nine. Four fours are sixteen. Three threes are nine. 
four four is sixty. So this will be three point something. Right. So it's very clear that one point five lies here. So it has to be two point five. Right. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So two point five. Please write the question on all the four options. All the four options. A and B are irrational. So remove them. C and D, 1.5 lies before uh, root 3. 1.7, it's before that. So it's not in the range. It's not between root 3 and root 11. It's not between that. So 1.5 is gone. So 2.5 is between 1.7 and 3.3. All right. All right, children. So that's it for today's session. Thank you so much. Good night. And online children can leave the call. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Mom. Good night. Thank you. Good night.